Kelly. Mm -hmm. Nice to be with you here again today. Um, we're talking about men's issues, men's work today. And um, just looking around at the men's movement and a lot of changes in society, where would you say men are today? Um, well, for me, of course, I can just talk about my um, experience and you know it's limited like all our experiences are but um, and I can't speak for all men but one thing that excites me is is uh, how men have started to, to turn around and look inside it seems like for mm, perhaps centuries maybe millennia men have been looking outside for satisfaction and, and gotten real good at, at creating things and building cities and um, and you know, creating all these outside things, but there's been, for some of us, a lack of, of a deep sense of satisfaction or, or spirit that's in it. Some of the doing seems to have been motivated from just doing in the sense of um, uh, what it's about has been lost for many people. Um, and sometimes the doing of there seems to have gotten to a place where um, it's almost a, an avoidance of, of looking inside because there's some deep wounds in, in, in maybe all of us but certainly plenty of us that, that seem to finally be starting to get addressed and, uh, and so we get what we call the men's movement or whatever label we want to put on it but it's basically men that are turning around and getting together and looking inside and seeing, geez, what's going on in here? What's, you know, what is inside this place here? <laughs> and, I mean, women have talked often about, uh, you know, men not not getting in touch with their feelings. And, and of course, that isn't true of all men, but but in that general statement, there, there's, you know, there's some truth in that. And um, often when we look down and it's like, touch and feel with feelings, what feelings? You know, there's nothing inside here, you know? You know, we're, you know, there's a lot of this working from the head up and just coming across from that. Uh, men are traditionally good with vision and, and seeing solutions. And uh, so I think part of the journey, the men's journey and the men's transition is towards that connecting the vision center with, with the heart and with integrity and with compassion. And so the vision that we see is filled with uh, love and caring and, and nurturing of the planet and other people. And um, But that takes, you know, a willingness to go in and feel our feelings and, and find out the places that, uh, where our heart seems broken. Um, uh, and because in that mending of the heart that we can join these centers together and, and, and work with them in, um, uh, in unity. Um, so that's the scary part, right? <laughs> As you know. I mean, <laughs> um, what do you see happening with guys most of the time? Like the ones you deal with in your workshops or in your counseling? Is there something that keeps popping up? It sort of seems to be more, I don't know, more a male concern. Um, well, one thing that I notice about overall energy within um, workshops with men is, is uh, oftentimes it takes uh, more time and a lot of trust before the, um, a group of men will drop into into feelings. Where I notice, that, you know, I also work with mixed groups and. Um, if there's both men and women there, often the, the women will, will tend to drop into the feelings first and it almost gives permission for some of the men to, to follow that. But when it's all men, um, there's been so many uh, years of uh, ingrainment through through generation after generation of, of being the warriors and the hunters and it's like uh, I, I don't lay down and open my belly and, mm -hmm. and and shed a tear because somebody might come in with the spear right yeah. so when it's just men around um, it, it seems to take time to build that safety and, and trust with each other that um, okay maybe it's Maybe I can, you know, open up to my brother and um, maybe 
for a change, it's not going to be about competition. It's going to be about support. Because uh, I mean, I mean that this the competition is a whole other thing as well, right? Because and often we're competing at some level for the female for the relationship again, right? And um, uh, and that's one of the neat reasons, or one of the good reasons for having. Uh, groups with just men, where there isn't women, uh, women in in that environment, because right. it, it is a way to help bust that competition. Because as soon as you put a woman in the room with a bunch of men, there at some level there's this instinctual thing to okay, who gets the woman sort of thing, right? And I'm not saying with all men, but but it, it, that's often an underlying subconscious thing like who gets mom you know who gets love and nourishment from from mom and uh, so it's nice to this um, break that cycle and the beauty I see in the men's work is, is as we join as brothers then then we can integrate back into groups where females are there but rather than warring with each other at any level subconscious or conscious we can be in partnership and support and there isn't this this level of competition that that can often go on when when women are present so as men strengthen their relationship with each other then it strengthens their partnerships and um uh, with you know their mates or with other women yeah yeah Yeah. Mm -hmm. you see uh certain hazards and certain things in the men's movement now. Uh, one of the things I think of is uh, sometimes there's men can get together uh, as a way of blaming, you know, to get together to be victims together mm-hmm. or something. I mean, it's bound to happen. Yeah. But what are some of the ways out of that or around it? Maybe you don't have to go into it at all. Um, yeah, it's true. Yeah, I mean, uh, well, I was going to say it's true, you don't have to go into it at all, but at the same time, I think there needs to be uh, room for people to, to act out their, their, their place of victim. Because uh, um, one of our tendencies is, is also to go up and, and just uh, do this pseudo light <laughs> spiritual thing that everything's okay, right? Yeah. And ignore, you know, like uh, those parts of us inside that, that believe that we are victimized. And so first we have to have room for that to come up and, and, and to allow ourselves to express that, hey, I feel like a victim. Now if that's done with an intention to heal, and um, either as individuals, we also have that, that witnessing consciousness or that, that part of us that's in tune with the wholeness or the light as that victim's coming up, or if we have other men around us that, that can create that safety by really realizing that we're not a victim, can see us in our greatness, then it gives us permission to, to feel those parts of us that do feel victimized, right? And so we can allow that to, to come up and be come out of the basement, come out of the subconscious. And so we're conscious of it, and then we can start to heal it, because then we can start to lift it and see where, where victimhood is, is a falsehood, right? I mean, um, but as long as we're going to deny it, we don't see it, so we can't heal it and go around, oh, yeah, and that, you know, like everything's rosy and... No, I'm not trying really to transcend it instead of transform. Right, yeah. right. But it can, like you said, there is a danger. It can get out of hand because if nobody is seeing that victimhood um, at, at, at a deeper level is um, is an illusion in the group, it's really easy for everybody to just like jump onto the victim bandwagon and start complaining and oh yeah we've had it rough. Got the and, biggest victim story. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So it is. You know, it's an area to, that um, uh, requires uh, willingness and and um, some aspects of skill to to be able to really go into it and and have it be a movement rather than a, a wallowing, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
and to be willing to allow whatever needs to come up to come up. So this and that willingness, it breaks the denial. And it also breaks this intensity that I've got to, you know, I've, I've got to get all this stuff worked out, this perfectionist drive that, um, and, oh, that's interesting. I just caught this now, that the denial comes from a perfectionist system where, you know, I don't want to admit that I have any problems, right? So we deny everything because, you know, I'm perfect. Exactly. But then when we flip around and go, oh, geez, I have been denying things, now it's like now there's this drive to to uh, still go towards this perfection. Yeah, it's the know? same impulse and part of the denial in the first place. Right, yeah. right, right. But, I mean, to do that, you have to start seeing perfection differently. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. give up your own notions of perfection and admit that possibly, maybe, the world is already perfect. Right, yes, yeah. And that my denial is perfect. Right, yeah. In this moment. Right, right. And it's just something, another thing to accept. Yeah. And, and that it will move. Right, yeah, right. yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And there's a deep sense of peace in that. <laughs> and not... <laughs> But it's interesting too, because that again, it's so subtle and so tricky. Because that can be a head thing, and this be this ascensionist stuff of uh, you know everything's perfect, um, but not really feeling it deep inside. But it is those moments when totally, from our whole being, we're just filled with that sense of peace and knowing that that there is a true perfection behind all this that that's really powerful and gives us a taste of something that we continually want to see and tap into again. So when we get lost into thinking, once again, looking out and, and seeing things through our patterns and going, geez, it's not perfect, it's messed up. I got to drive to, to somehow make it perfect. Um, uh, it gets scary and, and, and we try and convince ourselves sometimes just with the thought that oh no everything's perfect right but then it becomes a thought again and it's not an embodiment or not a feeling because it's an attempt to try and push away um, our our imaging of things as being imperfect right and so it's not an allowing again, it's just a fight and another another struggle. And so what are your thoughts on positive affirmations? Um, it's, it's like any tool. It, 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 there's some people that are using it in ways that are, that are really moving them forward and that are really appropriate. And there's other people that are using it for pure head stuff, denial of, of what's going on. Um, I've, I, I've seen people use them in, in ways where they'll, they'll say an affirmation and, but then they'll notice what's coming up from the subconscious mind. This is bullshit, right? Yeah. And so one way, the thing that you can do is you know, write down the affirmation and then write down the response and then write the affirmation and write down the response and just keep doing it and seeing all the levels of places where we block um, the reality of the affirmation if the affirmation is indeed you know a, a reality or a truth then we'll see all the levels of blockage that we have and, and it can be a way to tap in to these these core belief systems that, that we have running um, but if we're this you know like some some people kind of promote well this say I'm a loving person five million times to yourself in the mirror and ignore any thoughts that that uh, might say anything different well you know like it's saying to part of our system that no you don't belong you're not part part of me and so we've split ourselves again so it can be a dangerous thing in that in but I don't know what dangerous it, I don't know what dangerous it's just a delay basically <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah. a delay of I did you know I I start to see things more in terms of of um, to me I, I feel like we're we're all evolving or moving towards seeing that perfection that you talked about earlier not just seeing it but embodying it um, really really getting it um, 
And, and we do all sorts of things that kind of delay that awareness of what's already existing, what's already, what's already here. And, and so really there's nothing wrong with any of the things that we do as a delay or that we call mistakes because they are just a delay and that's all just on the level of time anyways. I mean, it's like when you go to sleep and, and you dream for a while and it's like so intense and you're, you're locked into it and it's like, wow, every moment, you know, especially the monsters chasing you or something, it's like, ah. But then you wake up and you go, oh, all right, it was all a dream. And the time of the dream becomes nothing. And that's when, when we hit those sweet spots of really be connecting, being connecting with um, the perfection of everything, uh, the, the heaven that exists. It's like every time I wake up to that place, it's like, oh, well, that was a neat dream that I was having. <laughs> and it becomes yeah. like, you know, what was the big deal? But when I'm in the dream, when I'm living in the world of relative reality, uh, you know, where I'm intensely caught in the drama, in the movie, in the dream, it's like, um, you know, it's really important. And delay actually becomes um, uh, a point of, of suffering, right? And, and, and this is where the compassion, this is where, where all these calls for people to be in service, all those calls are about trying to lessen the delay. You know, it's, it's trying to speed the waking up so people can see, you know, the, the real reality that, that, that works behind all this. And, and because when, when, uh, when you or I or, or whoever, someone that has their heart open to any degree, looks out and sees somebody in delay, in, in, in delay, it's like it's painful. It, 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 you can see that they're in pain in that place, right? Because they're believing in the suffering. They're believing that things are broken, and and you can see that that, that it's affected in that way. And so it's like, as a brother, you just want to, you, you just want to go. Oh, there's another way of looking at it, you know. And, and if not you're to, willing, if you're right? willing, yeah, so yeah, I'm not to try and force them yeah. out or or anything. Because if I think that they're broken and that there's something wrong with them being in that place, well, I'm back caught in yeah. in the drama, right? And I'm not seeing them as whole, and that and they're not going to see an opportunity for protect uh, for for perfection or love or wholeness through me because I'm acting out broken too. It's yeah. like yeah. you know, let's get in and and wallow around in it, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You had talked, uh, you mentioned something called the higher mind. Yeah, I didn't, you know, it, that's a, such a tricky one because there's, there's, my sense is that, that, um, that we're all connected uh, to whatever you want to call it, an infinite intelligence or a, or a higher mind or there's a place where we're all, we're all connected. And uh, I just sometimes use the term higher mind. Some people use the term God. Uh, um, although God can be a scary one for a lot of people. I know for years, if I even heard the word God, it was like, I'm God, I'm out of here. Right? Because of the connotations that it had in my particular upbringing was, you know, there was all these man-made structures around what God was. And, and um, uh, so, you know, some people talk about higher power or, or whatever, but it's that sense of, of spirit in my sort of system or way of looking at things. Um, uh, I just have a sense of this um, energy that's, that's bigger than this, this little thing, this little body and this little system that's around what I would call Kelly, right? And that, that, um, that, I have open access to it if I'm willing to receive it. And everyone has open access to that if they're willing to receive it. Um, yeah, so I don't know if that answered the question or not, but yeah, yeah, so that's kind of what I'm referring to. And I know I'm kind of delicate in even talking around it because I know it can push people's buttons because there's, off, there's so many different uh, religious beliefs and dogma that... Um, Whenever there's talk of spirit or or God or higher mind, there can be a whole system 
that gets put in place with this, that it's one word. word. And so it, it, um, it's tricky to even talk about because my sense is to, what I'm finding is really key is for, for us to be willing to let go of all our belief systems. Every belief system uh, can be a trap if we hold on to it. Because um, it this blocks expansion, it blocks seeing things in a bigger, more expanded way. My system, my belief system, comes up against your belief yeah. system, and then it's, it's not like, big enough for yeah. <laughs> yeah. One of us has to be right. Yeah, right. 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 And it's it's one of the biggest acts of love to this surrender and and just let let that person have their system and let them be right. And who cares if I'm wrong or not? But what do you mean, let them be right? What if in my own heart I don't believe that they're right? For example, I look at them, say somebody's wallowing in victimhood, right, as we talked about earlier. And I'm not in that same place. It's so easy to look down on them for wallowing in victimhood, right? Oh, you poor guy, you got this, this crusty little shell of reality in my belief system in my, <laughs> my open-ended belief system knows better. <laughs> so open-ended it doesn't, it doesn't let in victims. Okay. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so what's a way through that? Like, like how do you, how do you honor somebody's, well, for lack of a better word, I mean, it's all some level of illusion. How do you honor somebody else's illusion at the same time as yours? Um, well, for one thing, when I say let them be right, that, that or what I'm saying is to not fight against it, and and that yeah, well, that that's their system, and 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 in fact, they are right because whatever they believe, that is what they'll create. So that is their reality, and they're they're right about it. If I'm in victimhood, then I am in vic I am a victim. And you can try and convince me anything, but as long as I believe in that, I am, and I'm right about it. I mean, just look at it logically. It's beautiful. Yeah, yeah. And 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 if you're in some other belief system, it was funny. I, I remember reading this this comic book once, and it had people going through their deaths, right? And one person was a Christian, and one was an atheist, and you know, it went through all these different systems. And then uh, it, it was going to reveal at the end, it was set up to reveal at the end of the story what really happened to all these people after death. Well, of course, the one that was a Christian that believed in heaven and believed that that was okay, that was the reality they went to. And the one that believed that they were going to hell, that's what they, and the one that believed nothing happened and nothing, you know, it was right. like, because of the mind being that powerful, we, you know, we can just create our, our own reality if there's that, you know, if there's really that, if our whole system, I mean, that's a metaphor in a sense, because our whole system has to believe that strongly and in conjunction to create a reality. Um, but it, it, so often we're working uh, with opposing systems. Our conscious mind will believe one thing. It's, that's the same thing, getting back to the positive thought. Our, our conscious mind will believe uh, you know, that everything's wonderful and, and in our subconscious and some place where we feel wounded and it's going, yeah, that's a bunch of crap. And, and so there's more than one, if the belief systems are in conjunction, there's more than one thing going on. So often if people are, um, that have taken this idea that we create our own reality by the power of our mind or whatever, or that gift of, of consciousness, and then they go, but geez, I've been doing affirmations to make a million bucks for, <laughs> you know, 50 years. That, that must be, you know, that must be all crap, that theory. But what they're not understanding is our subconscious is at work as well. And in most cases, it's way more powerful than our conscious mind anyways. So if they're not in conjunction, it's whatever one we really have the deepest, most strongest beliefs in that, that create that, you know, that our, our reality, the, or the way we see reality, right? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. At least that's my belief. Yeah. <laughs> and I,